Ah, it's not a hospital. <laughs> but the pills also fly in the thing. I noticed that a long I time ago. Not, there for you? not anymore. I clicked he didn't that. Actually understand. <laughs> he didn't get the dynamic we had and what it did to us. And me neither, actually. Up until today, I lived some sort of a misunderstanding. But it's over. It's true. You were there. Not just when we lost Astrid, you've always been there. I knew that whatever happened, you'd be there. It's not easy to explain why you fall in love with someone. There was no love at first sight between your father and I. We even lost touch after high school. One night, we went out on a date, and I immediately knew that it would last. There was when he looked at me, yeah, sometimes the eyes. Like he saw something oh. invisible, something wonderful, something valuable. I couldn't believe, in fact, he was looking at me. I was really anxious at the time about everything. But when I woke up at his place the next day, <laughs> for a it happened again. When I saw him the next day and the day after, and then after that... I thought they said that they didn't, so they're just like, but no, you know, I woke up at his the next day, yeah. I felt like I was taking drugs, and it was really good. I mean, you know, being in love does feel... Um, and I loved it. I didn't have that growing up with Marie. What is that? Like you believe in me. <laughs> Big sunbeam coming down. This way. You and Astrid. Yes. You too, my little dear. I my little dear is because the, the dear mode. And that's why we keep crashing into a deer as well, I guess. Astrid died. You see, my little Wait, no, what? Even when you're gone, you're never very far. She's not in the cards. We run her over. We tried to avoid running her over. Oh my god. Even before. Here's the deer in the roads. We ran her over. When Astrid died, I did what I always do. I leaned so, on you. Even worse, she wasn't even in the car. She was in the roads. But, <laughs> but now, though, I understand. I understand. She this is the time, deer. Poor dad was fit. Not literally. Don't worry, I'm not going crazy. It's just, it reminds me of this story I read while doing research for us. I wanted to write a social drama, you know, kind of like Ken Loach. I wanted to change the world. I never finished it, fortunately. It probably would have sucked hard. But at the time, this one story really struck me. The story of a guy named Wei Peng, a farmer in the Yellow River Valley who found himself... A unique occupation. His cabin is 20 kilometers downstream from Lanzhou, an industrial city that attracts poor folks looking for work. And their life is so terrible that a bunch of them are committing suicide. Young women, especially. Some kids and elderly too. More rarely, but it happens. Every morning, Wei Peng grabs his pitchfork, pops into his small boat, and he searches the river. <laughs> He's looking for bulky and soft lumps Most okay so he's fishing out carcasses. lumps with his pitchfork out the river he finds humans when Wei Peng manages to identify the body he sells it between 500 and 5000 yuan depending on the client what <laughs> I understood that what is a very unique Peng. occupation it's a horrible feeling not knowing what happened to a loved one they were Purchasing and also, you have to have a specific mindset to go specifically fishing people out of the river. How can you live with this Yeah. <laughs> then I reached the end of the art. His own child died in that river. Ah. Uh, a kid your age. He wants them all to know. a ball in the water. Wei Peng didn't know how to swim. He couldn't do anything. And maybe he might find somebody alive and save them. Just as I understand, Alex, some people find it easier to alleviate other people's grief than to deal with their own pain. See, she understands that. Maybe that worked for you, being in that position. Shut up. <laughs> as long as you were taking care but of But what's up, it's shut up. You wouldn't have to think about yourself. 
Exactly, you know, to help in someone else, you don't have to focus on your own thoughts. Maybe I, I never, I never thought about it that way. You avoid your own feelings if you're helping someone else because you focus on that rather than your own pain. Okay, then. Why? If I thought I was helping you but actually hurting, why did you come back to see me? I really shouldn't have. I don't know what came over me. I was happy to see you again. Of course, I liked it too. But and, you know, if you're in like <laughs> relationships with that song, you know, people go back. <laughs> That's beside Even if, you know, it still ends. I don't know why I did what I did. <laughs> it just I happens. I don't even know why I went to your house. Because you wanted to see me. It's true. I'm telling you, I have no idea why I went. Maybe it was out of habit. I think that's one of the reasons why I fell in love with Alex. And it's because you still feel the feelings, but you know, you also me. I need to get to end. Character story arc. He figured I couldn't get in touch with producers. I couldn't live without you. I believe that's why I went to see him last week. So he could figure it out for me. Except I didn't even know what my problem was on that day. Yeah, if only things in life were that simple. If only it were that simple. Anyway, it was really stupid, and I probably hurt you. Come on, Jin, stop that. Last week you were happy. For the first time since I can remember. Oh, well, what would you know? We haven't seen each other in months. That is true. And it wasn't my call. You're the one who left. And I respected your choice. I learned how to live without you. And you showed up on my doorstep out of fucking nowhere? What am I supposed to think? Yeah, he's totally right about that. I'm sorry, Alex. I truly am. I, I know you're angry and... I'm not angry. But I was in a bad place. I didn't know what to do. I needed to see someone. Why not your sister then? Or call a girlfriend? Even your mother, for that matter. I... You came to see me? Because I know what you are feeling. I understand your pain. Don't you think? No, I don't think so. You don't understand anything. <sighs> well, if you really understand, then why do I... And he hung up. <laughs> why the hell do I feel so alone? I mean, you've literally been saying alone, alone, alone. It was obvious that you were feeling alone. Like, <laughs> all of your things were alone. Okay, we're getting in the car again. Alone. I'm going to quickly go to the loo before she's alone as my controller vibrates. Enjoy that. <laughs> the buzzing returns. You are never alone. No one can understand what I feel. No one can tell me how to live with this. How you know, to that's a this. very defeatist attitude. Some people can understand things. It's a gaping hole in the fabric of life. And living with that big a hole in you is impossible. Yet you live on. So it must be possible. Oh, it's the deer. <laughs> you know, the, we haven't got a million metaphors saying you, the daughter, the deer. The, 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 that's the daughter toothbrush as well that we've got in here. That we've just identified. That's clearly her hairbrush. <laughs> okay, we're figuring out more and more things of these items in the car, and you know, she is Do the deer. Oh, that's the dollhouse that he was David talking about. She had built it herself in secret. That's impressive. It was really detailed. <laughs> there were even miniature figurines of Alex and I for you to play with. And it has a dollhouse within the dollhouse. Wow. Of course you remember. <laughs> You took to it immediately. And he was literally asking for it. Stories about daily life where you were the hero. Dollhouse within dollhouse within dollhouse, I see. It's true. I did it. And the figures are very detailed. I stole your house from Alex. Lied to him. And threw it away. I don't know why. Could you forgive me? <laughs> if I had a really good reason? What good reason could you possibly have to hurt him? This is Pauline, your father's new girlfriend. 
Actually, we've known her since high school. But I, I, when I went to Alex's house, I was kind of hoping I would get to see her. I was curious. She's a great girl, you know. I'm sure your dad will... To be honest, I always wondered why he picked me over her back then. She was probably with someone else or something like that, right? Okay, so this is a one-way memory. Got it. Your dad is still making video games. But he quit the big company he used to work for. Now he's making a game on his own. In this! Way, every game he ever worked on <laughs> talked about you. The games you were playing together actually gave him tons of ideas for his work. So, did, did he make this game? Is this game all about this real-life situation? I feel like there's going to be something there, but we've got to resolve the other things first. I thought Alex had gotten rid of that house when he cleaned out your room. After you passed, I never wondered, and Alex isn't one for clutter. Some people say that the dead haunt houses. I was afraid that you would haunt that one. Afraid to hear your voice if I stared at it for too long. Alex moved into this place with his new girlfriend about a year ago. He looked happy. Suburban homes aren't my thing, but I was relieved that he had finally left the apartment where the three of us had lived. See, most of our houses are like, you know, but not as big as suburban houses, but, you know, that kind of things. When I learned that Alex and Pauline were moving in together, I thought he had turned the page. Do you want to know what I felt? It's complicated. You were happy for him. I was impressed. Uh, once more, your father had demonstrated that he was stronger than me. And I'd like to say that I was happy for him. But in truth, I envied him. I mean, you know, they can both exist. I pictured Alex alone in his office, using his job as an excuse to play with your house. I found that beautiful. That didn't fit at all with the idea I had of him, always moving forward, never moping around. And then I realized that maybe... Maybe he wasn't telling me everything about his feelings. But also, you know, if the dollhouse was in his new house, what did it matter to you? Why did you need to Your get rid of it? Had everything. A new you know, because it wasn't going to affect house, you that much. So, you know, you didn't even take it for yourself. Boiling, you took it away to hurt him. And I needed to see him so he could comfort me. Just like... Like before, I thought he owed me that. You know, clearly you were like, you don't want that to be part of his new life. You don't once the, the memory of your daughter affected, you know, he doesn't deserve the dollhouse if he's moving on, so you're doing it to hurt him. Okay. And, you know, he kept it in his own way, I guess. Just so that he could meet his deadlines. Sometimes we did it together. Just fun sticks and a straw. <laughs> oh, all right, I know it's bad, but when we knew that you were coming, we stopped. And that's why I was surprised. Oh, you're both ruggies? At his place last week. He tried to hide it, but I laughed in his face. I mean, you know, if he's coping in his own Still, way. I, well, I thought to myself it was a bad sign. He's just coping in his own way, I imagine. Just sat staring at the TV in the silence. Gaunt. N not just because of the blow, it was like, I keep been crying. I, so he's taking it to stop him, hurt? Ask him how he was doing. He just dodged the question. So I insisted. But he said he wanted to show me something, and he started a video game. Something called Night Call. A murder mystery noir where you play a... I've heard of it. it I've heard of it. really good, but it's hard to have a conversation with a controller in your hands. And in a game that's like, you know, intense narrative like that, you know. Probably <laughs> difficult to have a meaningful conversation. But, you know, maybe he didn't want to have the conversation, which is why he started up the game to distract and move away, because he didn't want to talk about it. The 
perhaps I threw right. that Did we choose? <laughs> Is that a choice? Stuck in nostalgia thing. I found it incredibly offensive. But we have to discover them all, I guess. I threw away that house because I was jealous of Alex's new life. In fact, I might have wanted to show your father what he was losing by losing us. Or a mix of all three. Perhaps I threw away the house to shake up Alex, to get a reaction from him, so he could be mad at me, so he could snap out of his lurch. Yeah, all of the above. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's a different all of the above. And back into the house we go. Look for the last of us. The last meaningful the brush. I see that brush. Eggs. <laughs> this looks awkward. It's also like, you know, the kids making the sex. We had a great night in the end. We drank beers, we played, we laughed, and after a while... While his girlfriend was in the house? What I was doing there, <laughs> really. I thought about telling him the truth, but instead I... I kissed him. To shut him up. me. And more. It was very nice. Much more intense than it used to be before. And it made me want to cry because... That was way too late. I mean, you know, it probably stopped because of the losing a daughter thing, you know. <laughs> it was probably hard and, you know, like, you know, that then becomes an even more awkward situation because it's like, what, are we just having sex because you want to replace the dead daughter? And like, Perhaps no. <laughs> that, that was my gift to him. Perhaps I thought he needed this old relic out of his life. Like he needed me out of his life. I'm sure all of that contributed to my reaction to a certain extent. I was jealous, a bit petty, conflicted, and on top of that, I was a dollhouse thief. But there was something else, something that really hurt me, and that I'm only understanding now. I was ashamed. And back in we go. See what else we discover. <laughs> in the dollhouse. A new shameful room. Just back to the original one, not back to the sex. Oh no, that's the more within more. He's hurt too. I came to demand support from Alex. <laughs> I thought it was unfair. He looks very happy with himself. But when I came across that dollhouse, I realized that he missed you as much as I did, which is actually why I threw it away. That's the reason the dollhouse was proof that for years I had been blinded. I was ashamed to only realize now that he too was hurting. You never know, hurts in their own way, right? So, you know, don't assume. Just making assumptions is the wrong thing in the whole thing anyway, so... In your pain. Don't you think? Her too. How... How is this possible? How did I not realize that he was hurting too? And how come he never told me about it? Well, how about you? I mean, you know, it's an awkward thing to talk, talk about, about, right? That? What? What do you mean? How many times have we talked about Astrid together? About her death? Dozens of times? Hundreds, maybe? That's because we needed to. I needed that. That was the only thing I could talk about. And Alex was always there to listen to me. To check how I'm doing, to inquire about, to assess, to ask if... And I never asked him any questions. Not a single one. Are you sure about that? What do you mean, am I sure? You were devastated. And you? How did you feel? Come on, again with this shit. Pauline is always trying to make me talk to. 
I don't have anything to say. What am I supposed to say? And you can't keep quiet about your feelings. There's no way you never <laughs> felt the need to talk about those feelings. That whole time when you finally got me to calm down and fall asleep? How did you feel? What did you think? I... I, I don't know. I can't remember. Why are you dragging this up now? Because... I never thought to ask you back then. Well, that's all right. I... I'm okay. I was okay. It's not your fault. He's still doing it. He's still trying to protect me all the time. It... He needs to understand that things have changed. Yes, it is my fault. You were alone with your sadness. But now I'm thinking to myself that well, it wasn't fair. You know, I just realized something and I'm so ashamed about it. You're hurt too. And and that didn't even occur to me until now. I mean, you know, you were really devastated. It's easy to not be thinking about thinking other people. About <laughs> not about Astrid? When I was alone that night, I was thinking about what I needed to do to help you get better. That's all I thought about. But again, he was doing that to distract from his own feelings. So that kept me going. And now that you're no longer here, I'm not going to get there in time. I lived in fear of everything <laughs> for a long time. Fear of making the wrong choice. Fear of making mistakes. Fear of not being good enough, not smart enough. And Alex was an antidote. At least as long as they were all in my head. But you know, since what happened to you, I haven't feared anything. Perhaps because I don't have much left to lose. I can take care of myself. You were the best support one could hope for. And that's why I now feel confident to do it on my own. You're free now. Free from what? Free to face your own emotions and deal with them. To heal your own pain. I... The dagger. I know. <laughs> I ever think too much about her, about how much I miss her. And you've been gone for too long now. You need to get back it to the other part of the wall. It scares me. Oh, I'm pathetic. Of course you're not. I understand. Last week to me that was just like before. Alex, are you still there? Here's where it gets awkward. Marie had this weird, it didn't matter the reason, from bike falls to headaches to world hunger. She had this theory that there are two reasons one might happiness and sadness. Either from surprise when life sucker punches you, or from They're both cowardice, wrong. when you give up on fighting back. You only get to cry once from surprise, she used to say. And there is no time for cowardice. Well, I sometimes you cry because you've mustered up the courage to look at life how it is. I mean, you know, that one seems like a bad option to say. Oh, I'm going to cry if you cry. That's just toxic. Are you okay, Alex? Oh... Look at me, I'm about to win the contest. What? What contest? The world's dumbest question contest. <laughs> oh crap, you know, I'm so sorry. You don't owe me anything. I guess I should leave you alone. Yeah, well, I haven't exactly made it easy for you. But I'm not doing well, okay? Really? It's okay to not be okay. Wow. You don't get these heartfelt moments from him, ever. Since I left? You don't bring up last week, because that's just awkward. Let me show you something. It's my dick. He wants to video chat. <laughs> no thanks. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is... Uh... Did I ever tell you the story of the lookout? It's a very special place for us. Looks a nice view. We were driving, 
Alex, you and I, you had to be two and a half, maybe a bit more. You were already very bright, and you spoke very well. You were always cracking jokes. Is he about to kill himself? You told me your tummy was hurting. <laughs> and now I'm going to jump off of here, because, you know, I can't really handle thinking, life oh, anymore. She's okay. And then hearing the sound. Because you stole his dollhouse and caused all of this pain. Warm day. Except it wasn't so. Now he's on the roof. It was the worst pile of vomit I had ever smelled. When he saw your face in the rear view, he spotted some kind of rest area on the side of the road. But in the time it took for us to get there, the stench was so strong in the car, we could hardly breathe. I didn't even wait for the car to stop. I jumped out, went for your door, and squeezed you against me. I didn't care if I got dirty. I just wanted you to feel good. I thought it was my fault. I should have listened to you. Your forehead was hot. It, it could be serious. I carried you out to the banister on the end of the clearing and laid you on the grass. Your face was pale and your eyes were bulging. Oh, dear. You were vomiting, looking up, staring in the distance, screaming. Well, I vomit for oh, like two, dear. three weeks. Oh, dear. And not a dear again. Oh, dear. I didn't understand. <laughs> I kept yeah, my parents you, didn't give a shit. <laughs> Cutting your back, pulling your hair away from your face to help. And there was a pit growing in my stomach and my eyes were welling up. I was terrified, and your dad was terrified. You were smiling. You pointed in front of you. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. So we turned around. And on the other side of the dear. banister, there was a cliff going straight down. And down below, there was a... I could have written this whole scene. He was standing tall beneath the sunset, as if holding it with his antlers. And he was looking at us. Alex took a picture with his cell phone. And you kept repeating, a oh dear, a oh dear, clapping your hands when he finally jumped out into the bushes. Wow, we were in a daze, you know. We couldn't believe the beauty of what we'd just seen. And then you vomited one last time on your dad's shoes. And that day, you became the world's greatest deer fan, my little deer. What are you doing over there? Do you recognize the place? Of well, duh. I do. I'll never forget <laughs> the lookout. Every time I take this road, I have to stop. The other drivers don't get it, of course. They ask me if I need assistance, if I broke down or something. I'm just trying to enjoy the view. It's so beautiful. Today I came here just for that. Why the sudden rush of nostalgia? Because you stole the doll's house. Did you see the deer again? No. I never saw the deer again. I never see the deer again. And that really, really sucks. Uh, Alex? <laughs> staring me a bit. Just Don't staring at the camera. <laughs> oh, well, you were right, you know. This whole time I thought I was helping you. I thought you needed me so You're you holding you back. Crumble. But that was a goddamn lie. I was the one who needed you. Even before Astrid died, I needed you. Helped you know with a tyrannical mother. Did you cause you know problems for him? Career. Uh, he's having sure a breakdown. You know how to be happy? <laughs> a good one. It was easier for me to think you had issues. But I was the goddamn issue. It can't be easy for him to realize this. But he has to. At least I hope so. You're being harsh, Alex. I'm not being harsh. That's a fact. And not everyone is as talented as you when it comes to forgetting the ugly stuff. I remember getting in the car with you. I remember waking up in the hospital with Alex by my side. But what happened in between? Apparently that's pretty common. During extreme events, your brain does not generate memories. It's too busy surviving. I survived. Which I guess means that my brain worked really well. But since then, was it all... But she's also probably fault? blocking out the trauma, you know, because obviously she did cause it. To hold it against me one day, anyway. But it doesn't hurt any less. And her brain's blocking it out. <sighs> that was really shitty. I... I'm sorry. I'm just 
tired and sad. Do you want to know why I don't think about Astrid? The real reason? When I think about her, I say things to myself that hurt too much. That I will never see her again. That I will never hear her voice. It is dead, the sun. That I will never carry her to bed in my arms. How am I supposed to live with that? If only I had the answer to that. That was something! Well, time for us to die in another car crash. <laughs> Because they didn't okay. let me click it. That's it. It takes time. Except the more time passes, the worse it gets. And I'm getting tired of waiting. It's always an what argument. What are you saying? Alex, what are you saying? This place He's is about to jump off the cliff and kill himself. Really beautiful. Bye, Jun. Good luck. Alex! Don't! Alex! Alex! Shit, I gotta get over there. Except you're not going to, you're going to crash in a car, crash yourself. I have a really bad feeling about this. Alex is strong, but... He didn't look well. I've never seen him like this. I could be Watch out for the deer in the roads. I will never forgive myself. Watch out for the deer. Water. Okay, there's also a bottle of water. Um, some breath mints. Oh, the lighter! The lighter's a thing. Come back, lighter. Okay, well, the lighter's also a memory, so I'm guessing we're going to go into multiple memories. Dollhouse again. What have we got to discover now? Sex? More with the sex. Do you remember the first time we made love? How could I forget? Your arm got stuck as you took your shirt off and you just stood there with your boobs out. That picture is forever etched in my mind. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever going to come to my help? Certainly not. I had waited so long for that moment. I was relishing it. I will well, that's a little awkward. Father, you know, forever. Being able to strip naked, completely naked, and feeling good anyway, that's rare. I hope that I will experience this feeling again one day with someone else. But I'm happy to have known that once in my life already. With him. Yeah, not many people do experience love, so, you know, especially not dumb fucks who, you know, treat women as objects. They definitely don't experience real love. So you're lucky when you get to. <laughs> and then they think they're so clever saying dumb shit. It's like, yeah, but you never experienced real love though, do you? So, <laughs> you know, who's who's really... I don't even say that back to them. But that, would, that would destroy them. <laughs> that would completely destroy them. Family. 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 Is this, are we going to see the mum doing something with your girlfriends? I feel like there was something on the table there. Maybe not. Where's, what are we looking for in here? What is in this memory? I'm not seeing the thing. I'm not seeing what we're meant to interact with here. Fine. Like, can we sneak in there? Nothing hiding in there. The truth! You did what? You set the place oh, on fire. Come on, <laughs> I panicked. I just felt like something shady was about to happen. If you think I had any time to think. And also, I was drunk as a skunk, so. You're really I don't know, you kind of said you weren't drunk. You really think so? Uh, yeah. This is three thousand dollar whiskey. You <laughs> could at least have saved me a glass. Oh yeah, not set in the place on fire, but you know, oh, it's expensive whiskey. You've wasted the expensive whiskey. I always told him everything because I felt like he understood me. I can't just ignore other people's judgments. You do need to be truthful to someone you love. That's what it's it's like the lies are what breaks it down. You know, hiding things and the lies are what breaks these relationships. 
The hero with a thousand faces. Okay, back to the loneliness scene, I guess. We're just looking for another alone. The dead eye of the deer. <laughs> like that cheetah's just giving a nice little caress to the head. It's not eating it. It's... I don't know why you think it was hunting it and eating it. Also, that disgusting pizza. <laughs> like, I'll just have tomato. And nothing else. No cheese. No. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those ones with the topping on top of the cheese. Because I, I believe that's actually a thing that can exist. Is a pizza with the tomato on top. It's a weird way of having it. But, you know... Let's All pretend right. that that's you what's really <laughs> going on. And what are you up to? Are you writing again? Shoot, Jan, how did you know? Lady, this isn't rocket science. You're just like mom. It's in your blood. Why do you think Alex has been pushing you all these years? You're the only one who's unaware that you're an artist. For a long time, I thought Alex was pushing me to write out of mercy because he thought that it would somehow fill a void in my life. It never occurred to me that maybe I was actually talented and that he had figured it out. There's more to this scene, though. It's another alert, isn't it? <laughs> but that sounded like something crashing and burning. Probably the car that we're in. Okay, so not... In that direction. <laughs> Even though the white noise and the crackling and the burning is in that direction. There's no text. Okay. Back to the pizza. Back to the deer mug, quite clearly. Also, in all of these instances, she's wearing the same grey pyjama clothes and comfy clothes, you know. So she clearly wasn't coping. She, she was wearing the same outfit, unbroken. It's time to say goodbye to your dad, I guess. I mean, farewell to us. I can no longer be with him because your absence would take up too much space. And also because I realize now that our relationship had something kind of unhealthy. But that doesn't take away from who he is. They're like the drugs. <laughs> our story the cocaine. Ending, but each of us still exists. And we're even stronger than before because we've grown up ready for a better rest of our lives. Shaken, transformed, rattled, but unbroken. And back we go. How am I supposed to live with that? Today it's your dad who feels like his heart is in a million pieces. And this time, I'm the one who can help him understand that it's not all broken. I don't know what happened. And he's found a new relationship. He's found love. So, you know, he should focus on that. Why it looks impossible to overcome. But I also know that you will find a way. That's who you are, Alex. You always find solutions. I'm actually trying to learn that from him. The Gare the Nord! Or the stalker. The Gare du Nord. Do you remember the Gare du Nord? What are you talking about? When Astrid dropped Stinky Moose and he fell on the tracks. The train pulled in and she was crying her entire life out. I was already picturing Stinky Moose split in half. And what did you do? I... I borrowed a selfie stick from a tourist. You lay down on the platform and fished out Stinky Moose just in time. And you gave him back to Astrid without even cleaning him up? You filthy slob. <laughs> Are you still hung up on that? The whole thing was a rush. I wasn't thinking. <sighs> You'll be all right, Alex. Sometimes you need to let go of things you thought would be forever. But you're still here. Unbreakable. Nothing's always forever, you know. You, you might think some things, but, you know, things do end. Come on, you're stupid. You know I'm not actually Ryan Gosling, right? Uh, just let me live my fantasies, please. Thank you, Juno. Do you think it was 
damaging? Us being together? Hmm, to each other or to ourselves? Or just a way of acknowledging that you moved on. You know what they say! What do they say? That's what... <laughs> we did what we could. You know what they say? I don't know what they say. <laughs> we did what we could. I would have loved to know. Tempting to... Yeah, but it makes sense oh, that we... It's better to have loved and lost than to not to have loved at all, of course. That's what they say. I'm sorry for what I said about Marie. I don't need I to click that there. one. It's cliche. It's okay, Alex. Better to have loved and lost than not to have loved at all. It is true! It is better to have loved and lost than not to have loved at all. Not yet. You should. But this isn't the moment for that. You're right. Of course he's right. Then why is it so hard? Because you're moving on. I'm accepting that. I know that you don't remember the accident and I know you can't help it. And I know it's not fair, but... But he remembers. I resent you for that. And it scares me. Because he wishes he could forget. I'd like to believe that knowing what happened that day wouldn't change a thing. But I know that's not true. Because there are only two options. Either my daughter is dead. I killed my daughter. Scares. Yeah. Sometimes I feel really angry. I think she knows deep down. Me crazy. So if one day you do remember something, anything really, please tell me. I don't know if I will, but... This sounds like she does know. I'll try, Alex. I promise. You don't deep down she knows. You. you already gave me the best years of my life. Damn! Pulitzer Prize for Wisdom! No, no. I'm competing in the batshit conclusion Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to go, Jean. Don't do anything stupid. Okay, well, he sounds better now. What? Also, that's the dumbest no thing to say to someone who's suicidal. Did I sound that depressed to you? A little bit, yeah. But I could be projecting. I just need to... I'm going to call Pauline, actually. Yeah, call your no, wife. You Tell her that you cheated on her. <laughs> That'll go well. It's going to be okay. I think so, too. I'll talk to you soon, Alex. <sighs> what a conversation. But I think it really helped us. Really. Why couldn't we talk like this before? That depends on what Because you're both talking about. struggling and holding before back. Before you were born? Before you died? Or before we split? <laughs> <laughs> All of these are awkward. Let's say before, before you were born. born. We were kind of lost. I felt like I didn't exist. And that's why you all took drugs. I didn't know why I was here. I was a little bit depressed, I think. A lot, actually. Then you came, and everything changed. I miss you a lot, you know? I mean, that's obvious.